going on, my friends? Welcome back to Everyday Struggle. I am Nadeska here with Academics and Wayno. We got some new music to run through today, but first, my friends, how are you feeling? Feeling great. I'm enjoying being canceled because the last person to be canceled was J. Cole. I think I'm in good company. <laughs> I don't think anyone's ever successfully canceled you, Ak. I feel like this happens every no, three months. <laughs> Yeah, but this time we've we finally got the the Avengers of the niggas who wanna get act out trying to line up. So it wasn't official until of course Meek Mandela hopped in yesterday. Uh but according to Meek, he's now the cancellation guy. Okay? Even though he got ran off Twitter for four years after trying to cancel Drake, but he's trying to cancel me. Uh please, now this let's let's yeah. talk about it though. Let's talk about academics. Yeah, I'm finally glad because I I, I like Freddie Gibbs, he's dragging it. He needs a promotion. Uh, I'm like, damn. I feel like I'm no. That's facts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, stop it. I feel like that's facts. So I was like, damn. I can't really keep going back and forth with this guy. So I was like, yo. I said what I said. He's gonna keep going. But finally, at least Meek, I would love to go back and forth with Meek. No, the funny thing is this, right? You talk about he needs a promotion or whatever. Act, you going? I ain't gonna lie, man. You going out bad, brother? You going out bad? No, I'm not gonna go back and forth with Freddie. No, you going like, out bad? Literally. I'm gonna say because you're not. I'm, t- I'm gonna tell you everything that you do. You do the same shit six nine do. All you doing is ranting and yelling. You're not doing nothing funny, man. Like the nigga put you on no, a shirt. No, because I'm not going. Well, yo, I I haven't I haven't gone back at Freddie since the first night. Cause what we were talking about, I told him bring receipts to shut up. He's making memes. He's a thirty year. He's a thirty eight year old gangster. The- hold on, hold right, on, hold on. Thirty eight. He's a thirty eight year old gangster on Twitter mm-hmm. who's supposed to be a rapper making memes. That's cool. I said what I had to say already. You try, you try to challenge me about something. I responded, mm-hmm. and I said, "Pull up her receipts." He didn't pull up her receipts. He pulled up with memes. Great. Have the funny laughs. Doesn't change the fact that you sell twenty thousand when you come out. All right, let's get him. All right, wait, wait, but I wait real quick before we get to this side. What does being thirty eight have to do with anything? <laughs> like, what, because no, no, no. What does that have to do because, with anything? Hold on, I'm gonna tell you why. What? Because while you're actually uh, like saying, "Oh man, you're going out bad." The person's going out bad is, isn't the person who changed the subject of why they're supposedly were trying to call me out. Do you remember why he tried to call me out on Twitter? What? Do you remember what he said? What, he called you a bitch or something? No, no. He, uh, well, this was off of um, clearly the comments that was made here. Mm-hmm. Then he basically said, I don't know like why this guy is talking, right? Mm-hmm. Like this guy calling me a little rapper, which in the grand scheme of things, I don't care what nobody says. You're selling 20 some thousand, you're a little rapper. I, like I cover the biggest rappers in the world. You're a little rapper. You're a 20,000 you cover sales little rapper. rappers. Anyway, so while he was trying to do that, he tried to shit on me as a blogger. I reverse shit on him. And then he switched the discussion. I get it. It's a, that's the 6 9 tactic. What? You call him a snitch, he's, he talks about your sales. That's a great 6 9 tactic. You feel me? So until, you know, I don't think he wants to continue that discussion that he initially started, I'm not going to be doing the meme making with Freddie Gibbs, okay? Because he needs the help and he needs the sales. Right. Now, Meek Mill. Uh. It's right, a lot right. we can talk about with Meek Mill. Okay, I'm wait, so real question cancer. before you move on to Meek. This is going to sound like a stupid question, but just because you beef with a lot of rappers, a lot of them you make up with and they come on the show or you have personal relationships, is this like a real serious beef or are you guys going to sort of Ooh. get over this? And With Freddie, no are you guys going to talk this out? Because he got so personal so quick talking about money, but is this one of those things where a conversation might clear this up in a few days? I don't want to have a... Com- like, I mean, no, no. It's just over? Of course. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Here's the thing. Anyone I usually have a problem with I think even Vic Mensa, except he was relevant, then definitely relevant now. Um, I, of course, would invite him to come on the show. That that's I think that's the last tweet I even sent to Freddie Gibbs. Mm-hmm. I said, until you address the things that you said and I responded to, right? That's how we have a conversation. Or you could pull up to Everyday Struggle whenever you want. We could talk. Because the me making is great. You're going to get a bunch of retweets and likes from people that don't like me. I get it. But funny. we're not having conversation. Might have a little funny moment, but to, be, to, me, to me, honestly, it's still funnier to me that he's only selling 20000 Sorry. But Meek Mill. I, I, Meek I, Mill I is like, let's, you. can we get to Meek? God yeah, damn yeah let's get to Meek. Let's get to Meek. Go ahead. Meek is the person who somehow he thinks he's a hip-hop president. So he third parties every type of situation going on. Shit don't got to do with him. This is exactly why... He's talking about canceling. He's the exact reason why he got canceled his damn self when he went to Drake. Now, I'm not comparing myself to Drake, but I'm just showing you this, uh, this guy has a pattern of just jumping. Uh, wait, wait, no, no, no. How, how did he get canceled? Meek was on Twitter. How did he get canceled? 
Bueno stopped, bro. He got ran off Twitter for four years. He got if ran that's off not canceled, if that's not canceled, what is? Meek is a guy who used to be talking numbers too. Uh, by the way, we could talk but about niggas live in real record. life though. All right, so go ahead. Ever since his collab with Drake, which peaked at six, the nigga hasn't had a, uh, another song that's been in the top fifty. He dropped a song with, with Justin uh, Justin Timberlake, flop. Dropped another song by himself, flop. He did also Black Lives Matter song, same as Little Baby. Little Baby song peaked at two. His song, flop. All I'm trying to say is that Meek is in no position to think he's like some hip hop authority or king that he could cancel anyone. Regardless of the canceling shit, wait, wait, wait. All right, so regardless to the canceling shit, regardless. You talking like Meek is not a successful artist at this moment though. Like oh, even no. with, even with saying no. that, even if even if you say that he dropped a song here, a song there, a song there, and they didn't do well, they flopped, whatever you want to call it. You talking like he's not a successful artist? Well, well, wait, no. See, this is why this is why I like to stick on topic. Yeah, let's stick on topic. Meek Mill, on, on topic. Meek Mill mentioned, "Yo, Ack, you're canceled." And my, the first thing that came to mind, and what a lot of people also say, who is Meek Mill to cancel anyone? <laughs> like, yo, th- that's the point. Meek, you can't cancel anyone. That's just the, that's just the point. You know what I mean? Like you're not that. Like I don't. know. I think hanging with Robert Kraft and you know, of course, I, I love everything he's doing for with prison reform. Don't. I, I'm not that type of person who would, uh, you know, take shots at that. But like, yo, not because you popped the wheelie and and unfortunately got locked up and you came back. I'm glad you did. Means you're now like you know, like you are actually living up to the title of Meek Mandela, where you say, yo, he's canceled, <laughs> and everyone's like, okay, thank you for the decree, King. No. Well, I don't believe in the cancellation shit as a whole with anybody doing it. But at this, I'm I'm just saying it's like you 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 speaking as if like this nigga is a, a nobody rapper is like like the way you try to spin it on Freddie Gibbs or whatever you fuck up with the all the 20, 20 thousand sales. Now look, yeah, he dropped a few records that didn't do well, but you acting like like that means his last his last four. His last four? Well, this didn't just start four. right I, now. I, I feel like you and Meek have been going at it for a minute, right? Before it even hey. became a public thing, I feel like you guys are going at it in DMs and through third parties, so I think this is a deeper issue. You see, I'm finally glad he would tweet me directly because prior to this, Meek Mill, I, I always called it a digital jump-in. Like, when he thought it was too big to um, uh, talk to me because I'm a blogger directly, but he still wanted to, you know, feel like, you know, whatever... He DM me with like forty nine niggas from the, the <clears throat> chasers to, to you know like basically tell me whatever. Anyway, I'm just glad he's tweeting at me now. I still welcome him to come on the show. You feel me? All that everything he's saying on Twitter, we would love to. I would love to discuss in depth. Um, for all of these guys though, like you know making Twitter memes and all that stuff is funny, and we know the, the very popular name that goes with Twitter and, and Meek. You could come on the show. We could talk. I'm. This is an open invitation. It's Freddie Gibbs, Meek Mill. You're going to win the Twitter war. I'm not the most liked person over there, okay? But let's have a conversation. Because there's no more rapper in hip-hop that's more hypocritical than me. And I would love to talk about it. What do you want? I from? love that word, hypocrite. Yes. You <laughs> love that word, hypocrite. All right. Well, Ak, as long as you're good. You always seem good. That's the thing. Like you said, always oh, no, unbothered. Just, I mean, you don't remember, care about knows being in the basement. Yeah. But <laughs> no. we, me and Wayno can't laugh at any of the memes because then we're disloyal as fuck. I'm laughing at whatever I want to laugh. The, the the meme the memes are funny but uh like no one is canceling no one like cancel culture I just like, want to wanna know honest, I just want to know can't... what you I just want to know what y'all going to like all right like when Freddie Gibbs I and oh oh, oh and even by what? even about Freddie Gibbs Freddie Gibbs was talking about you know Freddie Gibbs is one of these guys who claim they hate snitch and blah blah first of all Freddie Gibbs was the first person to act complex with a fake hacked tweet. That was sent for my account saying some really disgusting shit and trying to act like I said it. So if you hate snitches, but you already try to snitch on somebody you don't like, and you're snitching a fucking lie. <laughs> you know what I mean, Freddie? Come on, man. Get it uh, yo, get it together. Also, I think your dad's a cop. Like, okay. you should probably like snitches. Snitches help him do his job. Yeah, I cannot believe this all spiraled out of an opinion on Jeezy. It's pretty crazy. And Jeezy's probably sitting because at I, home, I, I, doesn't I care ultimately, at all. No, listen, listen. Yo, Jeezy's no, probably having so nice. a day. Cause act, listen. I, I feel like act, act is a fucking nitpicker. He didn't need. He he was a defending Jeezy. I just didn't look at. No, act I, like, I was. No, bro. No, I, was. I, I feel I, like act, I, I act used not. it as. A, I I feel like he used it as a fishing rod. The, the the beef about some shit. I really do believe that. Like no, Jeezy no, don't need I'm, you to defend him. Like if Jeezy ain't bro, complaining, why are you complaining? Bro, because we're, uh-huh. we're doing a show, right? And to be honest, I would look like a hypocrite if I agree. Like if you watch my history on the show. I don't care if someone likes me or doesn't like me. <clears throat> Y'all better at least just be be honest and say, at least act always is the same. 
I don't care if Jeezy like. I don't think Jeezy like. Did you see when Jeezy came on Everyday Struggle? Yeah. Okay. Like there was a little energy there. I forgot about like, that until you mentioned it in your yeah, tweets. I don't think awkward. Jeezy's like. Oh my God, act yo. Thank you. No. I just know it would be very dishonest of me to say, oh, great, Freddie Gibbs has a great point. GZ is completely irrelevant. He's super relevant. I would be dishonest to say that when all the facts say that even though we could probably say that GZ isn't the same artist he was in the past, GZ in some way, shape, Jeezy's or form. GZ's still GZ, no matter what. I mean, he's... Exactly. But, but nobody's not taking exactly. that from him, and that's if Freddie never took that from him. That's what I'm saying. He never took that from him. He just said that at this if moment... If anybody was hating, it was Freddie. Hating? Freddie was just mad that I... Bro, he literally just jumped out while he's talking and said, yo, me and GZ can fight. What up? What up? Me and GZ can fight. What up? It was but like, you know, okay. you, know, you know why. You know why, like... I know their history. You know, I get it. That. But that's an... I'm, I'm giving just an objective opinion just to be like, hey, like, if another artist, like, I don't know... I don't even want to bring another artist into it, but like you know, say for another artist who was of the same caliber as Jeezy when Jeezy was doing a lot better, said that about Jeezy now because Jeezy, you know, numbers dip down a little bit and you don't like we don't we, have, we don't talk about him in the same light um, about his music these days. I would be like that person has a point. I think yeah, I did get at the messenger because like the message seemed crazy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the message seemed crazy coming from Freddie, but I but, but again. I also said it was a disclaimer. I was like, I know he don't like the dude, so I get it. When you don't like the dude, you just make some points up. You feel me? Like sometimes when I don't like a rapper, I don't make a point up, but I put some points into the mix that you'd be like, I get it. Exactly. Well, <laughs> you know, <laughs> exactly. It's petty exactly. shit. It's petty <laughs> shit. <laughs> like I, as always, I hope you guys resolve this. But what I took away from all of this this week is that I could buy me and my entire family tree, and I don't know how I feel about that. Your Twitch rants have been crazy. Uh, so let's talk about some music now, and maybe eventually you guys. That was, he- we'll that was heavy demics. That was not academic. <laughs> academic. Exactly. Yeah. I'm drinking smart <laughs> water. Smart water. Uh, all right, let's oh, talk. That's a promo. Cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's talk about Trippy Red and Pierre Bournes. Over the weekend, Trippy Red mentioned on IG Live that a producer that he used to work closely with is now trying to charge him eighty thousand dollars for a beat. So uh, Pierre caught wind of this and then posted like the current stats on his album, The Life of Pierre Four, still doing really well. And in the caption, referenced the eighty k. Uh, Trippy eventually replied with a message saying, "You know, I remember, I remember us in the studio." coming up with the whole video game sound. I always helped you remember that you let me down as a brother. Now, uh, rappers and producers have fell out before, but do you feel like this comes down to some sort of loyalty situation or is business business here? I feel two ways about it. I feel like, you know, yeah, like, you know, being charged 80K for one beat is pretty insane, right? But I also feel like, if we are brothers and we came up together, then it shouldn't be a problem with, with 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 you giving me that type of money if it's in the budget. Now, if it's if this, I don't know what Trippy Red's budget is. He does very very well, but if he could pay eighty k for a beat and it wouldn't hurt him, I would give that shit to one of my somebody that I was in the basement with on the ground with before I give it to Dr. Dre or you know Kanye, somebody that I'm not always working with, you know. So that that's what I'm saying. I feel two ways about it. Like I don't I don't know. Like the the very dynamic of a relationship, but honestly, like, yeah, you 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 shouldn't charge somebody like that if if y'all have a great relationship and and they budget can't sustain it. But if you can pay eighty k for a, a, a beat, why not your man? That's how I feel. Like you know, why not your man? Because you're gonna give it to somebody else if they want it. So. Now, I completely get what Trippy's saying, but maybe it's because of how I'm thinking about it. Um. Trippy Red is one of, I would say, three artists that significantly helped Pierre Bourne become Pierre Bourne. And I always remember it was something, it was like a video of like Snoop like in the studio and he was working with, I think, the guy that made, um, what song did he make? I don't know if it was sex, is Sexual Seduction. I like, it was one of those songs, yeah. but it was a relatively new producer. And there was this kind of talking about like, kind of like the, you know, the head nod agreement they have. They're like, yo, listen. This song now blew up. Anytime we work together from now on, you're going to charge me some minimal shit or not at all. But when you go deal with the <clears> other <throat> niggas who didn't help you get to this point, you tell them you charge 100K a beat. That's what it is. And I don't know how Trippy and Pierre's relationship has been, 
But like, nah, man. Like, you can't charge him like the other niggas. If if I'm if I'm hearing Trippy, um, get upset about this, he's probably feeling like, yo, you're charging me like the other niggas. You know what I mean? Again, some type of either discount or like, yo, it's your man's. A lot of times people mm-hmm. do it for each other yeah. for free, and and it's not about really the money. It's about like, yo. Based on where you've got to your uh, this point in your career, it's because like I helped you. I like you're you're not doing you're right. not charging this amount of money for um um you're not charging this amount of money if I didn't help you. And what happens a lot of times, an artist they help you without thinking like okay cool it's gonna come back to bite me. And, and I know you might say that's your homie just paying the money, but like you've built up something now that's gonna tax you. Yeah, but I'm not. I'm not saying just pay him the money just because it's your homie. I'm saying that like I don't know what his budget is. Now, what I'm saying is that like if his budget could sustain that. Now, eighty thousand dollars a beat. This ain't fucking nineteen ninety nine when niggas is making million dollar videos and the budgets are super crazy, right? It's, it's not those times. I'm just saying that like if I had the opportunity to pay somebody eighty k for a beat, I would pay somebody that I know before. I go you do it with somebody else because somebody else is is they don't give a fuck how much you've been working and how how hard you've been working. <clears throat> when when you deal with a bigger producer, it kind of flips around. They like I don't give a fuck if this is the next hot nigga. He got to pay me my fee. So I'm just saying it's like yo if 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 you feel like that's your man and you can sustain it. Like I don't think you should just give him the money just based on friendship. I'm saying if you can sustain it and it could come out your budget and it wouldn't hurt you, then yeah, I would give my man eighty bands. I would. All right, let me ask you a question, all right, and let's flip it to a little bit, um, you know, a different situation. Mm-hmm. Because you know, I think some, I think people also are thinking about the situation based on what you will remember as the collab history, right? So, like, when people think about Pierre Bourne, a lot of people don't think Cardi. You feel yeah, me? Like, yeah, there's yeah. more of a Cardi association with Pierre than Trippy, even right. though Trippy in the very early stages did hop on a couple of beats. Now. Let's think about um, the baby and uh, was it Jesse yes, made it? Yeah. Jesse made it, right? Mm-hmm. If do you think? All right, cool. He's now a big producer. Say the baby's next album's coming up, and he says to the baby, "Yo, I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. Fuck with you and everything." And by the way, they used to work. This guy never had no career. Uh, right. By the way, I don't want to disrespect him, but you know, let's say he wasn't that big of a producer. He gave him a big he used, record. He, used to he give, got a big record yeah. with, with the baby, right? Yeah, let's say he was so. Let's we're acting like this didn't happen. Let's say he just used to give um, the baby beats for free. Now mm-hmm. he's like, "Yo, bro, I'm a big, big producer now. Yo, it's a hundred bands a beat. We we about to do an album again. It's gonna be ten of my beats. I need a million dollars. Do you think that's fair? Or not even do you think it's fair? But do you think that that probably won't sour the relationship, knowing how much you also helped him? Yeah, I think no. <clears throat> Definitely can sour the relationship. I just feel like it's. It's all in the approach. Again, I don't know how close they are if they talk like that. If if they they talk about being brothers, like I talk people that I consider my brother, like not just using the term as like how we use nigga. People that I consider my brother, I talk to them every day. So if it's something like yo, I got this fucking budget, nigga, let's go in. Then yeah, we gonna do it that way. Now if you just if we don't speak at all and you just come around talking about some yeah man, like it's it's gonna be this. Then yeah, I'm gonna feel away. But if there's no transparency and we not talking all the time. And you're not telling me how much you're leveling up. I, I, I just, I, I believe in this. Like, as I grow, we should grow together. Like you said with the Snoop situation. Yeah, I'm going to help you out. And then you could charge them other niggas. But all I'm saying is, is this. Even if I go charge them other niggas, I still should get like a substantial amount, whether you help me or not. Like, you get paid based upon the work that you do. And all I'm saying is like a lot of times with artists, they try to minimize the producers. And, and, and this is not specifically for Trippy's situation. I'm just saying in general. Like, a lot of artists try to minimize the producers. Oh, don't pay that nigga nothing. And being a producer is way harder than being a rapper. Rappers got rappers got to give out way less verses for free than, than producers got to give out beats. Producers might got to give out fucking 150 beats before they catch one that really goes. Rappers could catch one fucking record and this shit be on TikTok for a week and now they get a million dollar deal. You know what I mean? And, that, and, and that's the other side of it. I'm just saying it's like producers are underappreciated. And if you my man and I fuck with you like that, I'm gonna give you the bread. Now, if you come at me on some, if he if he if he came if they ain't been speaking and he hit him up and Pierre was like, yo, dog, I ain't doing that shit unless it's eighty. Then yeah, Trippy got all the right to feel how he feel. You know what I'm saying? 
I also think about just like, you know, and, and you're, you're a manager, you deal with a lot of, you know, contracts and producers, you manage producers. Mm -hmm. the, maybe Pierre could have made a better approach to it. Like what, what that 80K is for people to understand, that's a, that's a, an advance fee um, for for pretty much what the record's going to make. Just give him more points on the record. Right, you feel right. me? Like, he yo, hey, yeah, yo, but, yo, but since we work together and I'm, I'm now Pierre, yeah. right, on a production level, bro, let me get this splits in terms of royalties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Rather no. than, you know, oh, because what rappers always think 80,000. You know what I mean? But it ain't, they won't the care day. if the record uh, make that much but, but, and, and they give it back. That it, the thing is, Act 2, like, my thing is, this is like, at the end of the day, it's their budget, but it ain't really their money. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, it's not really your money. It's money that got to get spent anyway. Now, yeah, he could have worked on different terms, but honestly... These is conversations that we not even supposed to know. I just feel like, all right, if Trippy felt the way, why even go? Like, if that's your brother, why even go public with it? You know what I'm saying? Like, you you, you should just certain things that you should just keep internally because maybe if it was kept internally, it could have been worked out a different way. You know, once you start going on, y'all never to me, y'all never really was as tight as you thought it, thought it was because if he charged you whatever he charged you, that's something that should be all behind the scenes. We shouldn't be knowing about shit like this. Let's see if they work it out then. Um, we have a few more minutes left. Maybe we can run through a couple songs. Uh, we can start with Kanye for Hit Brick or Wait On It. You know, he announced that his new project, God's Country, is coming. So the first single we got is featuring Travis Scott. It's called Wash Us in the Blood. Uh, there's also a music video for the song. How do you guys feel about this? First Kanye we've heard in a minute. I like it. Uh, um, it has a weird bob to it. I think... When I first watched the video, because you know he dropped it with a video, and the video was just kind of random clips of street fights, twerking, GTA video. I was like, "What the fuck is this?" But uh, the beat is hard. You know what I mean? Uh, I think they chopped up some preacher's voice, you know, to be like a sample. And I think I think it was a good job. You know, Kanye is keeping to his word. He's not doing secular music. I wanted to hear how Travis was gonna sound on that um, because, like. How does a feature fit into Kanye's whole thing? Does that person also got to speak about God, or could mm -hmm. they be on some, you know, like just talking about whatever the fuck they, they usually talk about? And you know, it was kind of you know ambiguous, which which is cool. You know, hearing Kanye and um, Travis on a, uh, Travis on a track together again, it's especially since you know you know what they've been through it definitely publicly with you know the Drake thing and. You know, they're like brothers in law or whatever the case was supposed to be. Um, it was it was a good thing. So I enjoyed it. Yeah, I thought um I actually thought that this was good. This is actually what I thought he was gonna do on Jesus is King, go more the route of like this type of sound. But um the only thing is just like his flow seems a little bit off. I don't know what it is. Like Kanye just sounds like when you listen to his voice, it just sounds like he records differently than he used to. It, it sounds like he kinda punches in instead of just goes through it. But I mean it's a good record. I can't front on that at all. It's a good record. Hey, well, interesting enough, I remember when I gave the review of uh, um, Jesus is King, and I was like, yo, it, the mixing, like, I, I'm hearing white noise and shit like that. Mm -hmm. He admitted that 70% of that album was recorded on the iPhone. So, it, shoot, who knows? The way how Kanye is recording nowadays might be way different. Like, I still can't believe he recorded a whole, like, 70% of the album on the iPhone. Hmm. Recording in the Gap Sweatshop? <laughs> I don't know about sweatshop, man. Don't, 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 bring, don't bring it to the Gap sweat, Sweatshop. I got to go there to cut my, my Yeezy stuff. <laughs> All right. Tyga also has a new song out called Ibiza. Produced by Mustard. It sounds like Tyga's going for another party anthem here. Did this one hit for you? Yeah, it did. I'm telling you, it's going to hit a little different when, um, you know, uh, somebody was trying to, you know, I think they were trying to cancel Tyga. And Tyga flipped it back around. The Hulk Hogan's son was, you know, trying to embarrass Tyga for a little bit. And, um... Tyga turned around and flexed on him, and he had that song in the background. I'm like, damn, Tyga's showing us a lifestyle. This is the sound of lavishness, party. We in Ibiza with it. I don't even know what Ibiza is, but it should sound good. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think it's a fire. I think, yo, you know what? Like, after Taste and after the, uh, is the Mamacita record, whatever? Or mm -hmm. is it, like, we've been, like, Tyga has been dropping consistently. He'll, he'll miss a couple times, but, like, yo, for the most part, like, Tyga back still, man. I mean, I, I think, that, nah, this is a good record. I think Tiger's just on his, like, his flow rider wave. Like, he's just making party music. You know what I mean? He's staying in a safe lane. Nah, like, don't, don't do the flow ride. Yo, nah, flow rider, like, <laughs> don't get out the nah, lane. Nah, that's Tiger. his lane, though. Yeah, that's his the lane. That's party, his party, strip club music. Mm -hmm. Like, that's where he should dominate it. Right. And he is, I think. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because he always got at least an anthem. 
Right. That's rocking off. Yeah. All right, two more quick ones for you guys. Uh, Lil Mosey featuring Lil Baby, back at it. This is the first time they're collaborating. I'm going to hit the wait on the button for this one. You know, of course, anything with Lil Baby, I, I'm, I'm or, already almost going to like, but I'm wondering if this is going to be a an appropriate follow-up in terms of, you know, I'm watching the success a little bit, um, to Blueberry Fago. I think that song's a fire song. If you ask me if we're even considering whatever we're going through now, a summer, that would be a song that's a contender for some song of the summer. Is it right? the top 10 It's top 10. Say it? It's top 10. Oh, right? yeah, it's top 10. Yeah, yeah. By the way, clap it up for Mosey because trust me, like, you know, I... I I be telling people it's not personal. I call a spade a spade. I try to cancel. Him. I, <laughs> I was ready to call him done, and and he said fuck that, yo. When you when you get a hit like that, undeniable, you back in the game. And um, yeah, uh, this, this record like I'm just hitting the wait on it button, but you know it's not a bad record. Yeah, I say wait on it too, cause honestly I just went to it for baby's verse. So. I say wait on it. Oh my god. I ain't, I'm just keeping it a hundred, man. We keeping it hey, virgins. That's man. a power that's a power little baby where you <laughs> automatically just go listen to see if like yo, did he do it again? Like right. that's the type of thought. Yo, did, did yo did baby hit another three? It's like some Steph Curry shit. <laughs> Alright, the last one is from Black. Uh Ak, I saw that recently you were kinda impressed by his streaming numbers. He dropped an EP called Six Piece Hot. He has a song on there called Know My Rights featuring Lil Baby. Yep, yep. No. I like this. I like this. Um um, I'm gonna say hit just because I like it. Like I, I like everything Black has done in the last like, I want to call it a month, month and a half. He he had an amazing genius rollout. I haven't seen a rollout executed that much where nothing looked corny, mm -hmm. nothing looked forced, and uh, this whole six piece rollout it was like amazing. This particular song I like it a lot. I don't know if we don't, I know when we say hit because somebody somebody question hit bricker weight on it. If like some of these songs you just really like, but you know it ain't gonna be no fucking hit. Uh, I think this song is gonna work, so I'm just That's gonna say true. hit. All right. That's because the people determine what a hit is, and hit don't always gotta be top ten on Billboard. So yeah, it still can be hit brick away on it. See, the, we we ain't gonna go down this wormhole again. <laughs> I but already see the wheels like, spinning in Axe's you, you, head. See, yeah. you see it, right? You see it going. But seriously, I mean, I think that we do have the perfect term brick hit away on it because a lot of the hits are determined by the people. We determine what we feel is a hit out of this record. So whether it reaches the top of what people define as a hit or not, you know, we if we like it, it's a hit. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, uh, Black also dropped the hot sauce with this project, like I said, it was really dope, dope rollout. And then he put a bunch of links in his black box for fans to support black businesses and vote and all that kind of stuff. So well executed, especially considering everything happening right now. We got to salute to Justice and them over at LVR, right? Because mm -hmm. that, that, like, they are doing great work. They My genius African work, brothers. You know, from him to, mm -hmm. yes, to <laughs> Summer Walker, you know what I mean? Like, they doing great work over there. They snatching. I tried to sign an artist. Looked up, them niggas caught it. <laughs> like they doing, they doing great work over there. So salute to my guys for real. Young moguls, man. All right, let's end with a little bit of a fun fact here. So Kendrick Lamar's "Good Kid, Mad City" has made history, officially become the longest charting hip hop album of all time, four hundred mm. weeks on the Billboard two hundred, mm. which is really dope. I think it's currently sitting at a hundred, but obviously it came out years ago. So really incredible. Shout out to Kendrick for that one. Still waiting for some it new music whenever he's ready. Eight years ago at that. Just goes to show you how great Kendrick is. You know, we get people like academics sometimes questioning Kendrick's greatness, but... What? You know, that's another story. I'm questioning you know? his whereabouts, not his greatness. I'm saying, what a nigga He's back, he's questioning a lot of stuff. The only thing I would question, question about... his rapping ability. No, stop it. The only thing I would yeah. ever question is if he's the GOAT, because the only GOAT I know is named Aubrey Graham. Only? Maybe Adonis Graham too, but 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 oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, but man, salute to Kendrick and T D. That's that's crazy. That's, that album's eight years old, still in the top two hundred. It's mm -hmm. crazy. All right, guys. Um, we got a roll, but just uh, we haven't mentioned before. Obviously, the holiday weekend is coming up. Although it's a weird Fourth of July, I'm not sure how proud everyone's feeling of America at this moment that we're living through. But we are off all of next week, and we'll return the following week. I never know that date off the top of my head. So tomorrow is our last episode. Yeah, let me cue up the comments. Uh, what another yeah, break? Y'all yeah. going on break again? These niggas <laughs> take more break than anybody in the world. Yeah, they they gonna be on that.
It's July 13th. Yeah, we've, so, yeah, we've, in our defense, we've had some unscheduled breaks, get some just random shit, some unexplainable shit has happened. No I pandemic, <laughs> academics going missing. You know what I'm saying? All types of shit. Yeah. <laughs> it definitely was a break. What are you talking about? Shit, I, I was there for one of the days. I said, let's shoot. He was like, no, let's just start right Monday. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, July 13th. Thank you, Roger. We're going to be back on Monday, July 13th. So thank you guys for watching Everyday Struggle, and we'll see you here tomorrow on Complex. Canceling you, actually.